Don't get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So, am I the only one who remembers this? Because I've been taking a lot of baths lately just because I have been bit up by mosquitoes. So I've literally been just soaking in a nice hot tub with Epsom salt, just trying to get like all my little mosquito bites down. But am I the only one who remembers back in the day when we were younger, we didn't have a whole bunch of bath and body work products and, you know, scrubbies and things like that just because it was really expensive. So for me, maybe I'm the only one. I use dish soap. And that is how I took my bubble baths when I was younger. We used this soap. It was safe. It was fun. It created a lot of bubbles. But now I've noticed on TikTok, just from, you know, scrolling, because I've been on there a lot, um, there's this huge issue that I'm seeing with over-consumerism and how people just hoard and collect all of these bath products and they have these long two-hour showers and bath routines and soaps and body scrubs and to me it's just insane now I do have these body scrubs like this woman is showing here on camera but I have one of them and it's halfway gone because usually I go through the whole bottle before I decide to buy the next fragrance I don't buy six of them at a time why because most of this stuff ends up expiring so I never feel right buying a whole bunch of things in one time because a lot of times you're not able to go through all of that stuff I mean granted it depends on how big your family is but in my bathroom my bathroom is just for me so I don't go through stuff like that that quickly so for me it makes sense just to buy one item and sometimes I'll get travel sizes if I want to deal with like more than one fragrance I'll get the smaller travel size bottles of like Bath and Body Works you know as a opposed to the big bottles that can last me somewhat a year, year and a half. So to me, it's very interesting how there's so much overconsumption. And I believe that social media is making this a really big trend as of late. It's been going on, I would say, the past three to four years. And it started, I feel, with a lot of the makeup gurus. You know, like every other day, there was a new palette dropping, a new lipstick shade. And then you buy these palettes and you literally only like maybe one or two shades. I still have palettes that I bought literally four and five years ago that I barely use. I just got them to support, you know, said influencer or because I thought the packaging was pretty. But to be honest, you really don't go through that much makeup. And again, everything has a shelf life and an expiration date. Now, I'm out here for personal well-being. I'm here for self-care. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking a nice hot bath every now and then. There's nothing wrong with, you know, going to the spa or getting your toes done, you know, doing things to make yourself feel good. But I do feel like a lot of people on social media front and they do a lot of things to make it look like if you don't have all of this, you're missing out. Or if you don't, if you're not doing all of these routines, two hour showers and, you know, multiple fragrances of skin scrub and soaps, you know, you're not really taking care of yourself. And it starts to stigmatize people who are watching things like this from the outside looking in. Now, several factors, like I said, to me contribute to this trend. And I think a lot of it is social media, social media influencers, and they're really the ones out here promoting like, you know, these self-care routines and then also, you know, promoting things that get them paid on Amazon because a lot of this stuff is attached to affiliate links. So while we all love, you know, aesthetically pleasing videos of people organizing, because I love organizational videos. But a lot of it is wasteful. You're not going to use all of those products that you're organizing. You know, a lot of this is just for an aesthetic, even in your refrigerator. You know, my pantry is pretty organized. My refrigerator is pretty organized. But it's not to the point where it looks like a grocery store shelf or it looks like a, you know, a gas station refrigerator. Like we still have to have a place to store leftovers and, you know, other food items that we may not eat in the same day. 
I don't want my refrigerator being filled with nothing but beautiful prime drinks. So it's really crazy, but this topic is definitely taking hold on TikTok. So I wanna share some of these videos with you guys of what people are saying about the overconsumerism on social media, specifically TikTok. Dedication six, of course. <laughs> I want to start off this video by saying that I mean no hate to the creator who made that video that I just showed, but I do want to say that it shows the direct issue that we are facing with overconsumption and the glorification of overconsumption. Realistically, nobody needs a hundred different perfumes. Now, I'm not here to judge how you spend your money. I have the ways that I spend my money, I have my own hobbies, I collect my own things. But in general, the societal push that I have seen, and especially on TikTok, for this glorification of overconsumption is so terrifying because we are witnessing people being obsessed with monetary things and things that are not this permanent. This episode of I'm Rich, Your Paul. Look at all the... I want to understand the logic, the science, and the brainwaves as to why you have that much product. You have one face. And I believe the best use of my platform is to talk about how social media influencing does play a huge role in consumer behaviors. Being able to recognize that you're being advertised to is so important because it helps you make a more informed decision about your purchases. I just want to remind you that it's not normal for 23, 25, 27 year olds to be making hundreds of thousands of dollars by making little videos that advertise a product for a brand. I think on this app, we get bombarded with marketing and advertising from influencers and we, t we start thinking like, that's normal. It's normal to uh, have all of this money to be able to buy all of these clothes and all these groceries. Like sometimes I see the grocery hauls and I'm like, we we couldn't afford that and i just think that like it's doing something probably to our brains to constantly see people in their 20s making so much money off of this app and because like they have a following and that's great like yeah if that was my life like i would be doing it 100 percent. but this is just your reminder that if that's not you like me and you're a normal person working multiple jobs it's normal that's freaking normal don't buy into the um the way that this app only works if you feel jealous like all of social media it only works if it's evoking some sort of like envy in you because or else why would you keep watching and keep thinking that you need what this person has you know i mean all respect to influencers all respect again if it was me I would be doing it full-fledged. But this is for the people that feel bad about where they're at in life because they're in their 20s and they're working multiple jobs and they're still like, I don't know how I'm gonna afford my rent. You and me both. I was set up really well in life, really well. And I can't imagine being set up any less well than I was set up and having to exist in the world. So yeah. When I saw this photo, I was like, there is no way that this is for a single person. This has to be a shop or a reseller or something. But no, this is actually for one person. And they wanted all the different colors for the Stanley Cup. And keep in mind that after counting the rows, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows of Stanley Cups with around 11 on each row. Or at least that's the angle that's being shown. There's probably more. But that equals around to $3,300, which tax and everything could almost be four thousand dollars all right so you guys just saw some of those videos so i definitely feel like a lot of this is driven by social media it's driven by wanting clicks and views because again a lot of this stuff is extremely excessive i don't need like all of these bottles of things i don't need all of these bottles of shampoo and all of these bottles of body wash 
to me, it's just very, very excessive. Also taking long showers, you know, hoarding a lot of this stuff where it ends up making it seem like consumers are wanting these products. So then it tells the corporations at home, being that these products are being bought in excess, that means that they're really popular, people like them. So now we need to crank up production when that may not really be true. A lot of it is just people on social media. Like nobody's using scoops, you know, ice cream scoops of tree hut scrubbies. Literally, you just put your hand in there, you know, you, you mush it around, you rub it on your skin. You're not using that much in one sitting. So a lot of this stuff is just for attention. A lot of this stuff is for attention. A lot of it is to show, you know, one's extreme wealth. Um, you know, the fact that they have expendable income. Because again, a lot of these people are social media influencers. If you're working a regular nine to five, you don't have the money to sit here and splurge on a thousand different types of perfume bottles and have them neatly stocked when you're not gonna go through all of that perfume. You know, you don't have the time to sit here and do huge grocery hauls, right? where half this food you know is not gonna be eaten, it's gonna end up spoiling, but they're doing this just for the social media aesthetic. Who the hell has money to pour two gallons of milk in a bathtub to take a milk bath? That's just not realistic in the times that we're living in. Milk is hell of expensive, eggs are hell of expensive. So to see people just like, you know, pouring stuff literally down the drain just to go viral on TikTok or just to get the conversation going, it's very frustrating. Even when I watch some of these cooking videos that are just wasteful, that they're just taking huge chunks of butter and meat and, you know, raw noodles, they're not really cooking anything. Okay, now I had never heard of these people until the nacho thing. And now y'all are tagging me in all their videos. Okay, what is that? That's a, oh my God. That's like $50 worth of butter. What is that? A pound, one pound, two, three, four. I mean, you probably eight pounds of butter there. We're just melting it in the aluminum pan of shame right on the stove, huh? What could you possibly need this much butter for? That's coming from a baker. All right, cook shrimp, tail on. But they're frozen. So we're thawing the shrimp in butter. All right, y'all, okay. we got our butter tray here with our shrimp. you got raw shrimp? Inside. Just cook them in the butter. We're they would absorb more of the flavors. We're gonna show you make a real easy shrimp dinner tonight. All right, I got some oregano, fresh oregano here. Okay. You're just peeling right off. Fresh We're herbs. Some nice spices on this. A little more oregano. Credit. Look how easy that fresh oregano just comes off. So I much I mean, fresh is always better if you can do it. But if not, fried oregano, just not reach into your right here's some thyme. We're just gonna do the same thing with our little sprigs of thyme here. Getting okay. those thymes right off. Those on thymes. On into Leaves? our shrimps. And our butter. The shrimps. It's shrimp. Ooh, it's already be a plural. Flavorful dinner. Gonna come together so quick, Work. so easy. All right. Okay. Can't have seafood garlic in my cloves. opinion or any food. We're not gonna like garlic. so we're gonna put crush some them or mince them right on okay. in here. You're gonna get more right, flavor from the garlic if you like paprika, which to my understanding is a uh, red pepper. Okay. Just ground and smokes a little. All right, I like it spicy, so we're gonna do some cayenne, cayenne pepper. pepper. Not too much, but you do you, okay? Is we're basically making out? sort of like a Cajun seasoning blend right here with these ingredients. Mm, I feel like you're not. Coming in with no. my black pepper. You can grind mm. your own, but you know what? I got a grinder on mine, and it takes such a long time to grind this pepper. It's a lot of pepper. But I'm just gonna do this. Especially when you have cayenne we pepper and paprika in there. It's gonna be real good either way. I'm gonna give this a stir before we add our last little Look at them all clumped here. together because they're frozen shrimp. and now they're in hot beautiful? liquid. And... I got the large shrimp. I think they were 25 count, 25 to 30. You can get whatever kind you like. I know people are real particular about their shrimp, where their shrimp comes from. I mean, 
You know, if I'm you sure can get a wild caught that. shrimp, get that wild caught shrimp. If you gotta get farm shrimp, that's what you gotta do. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't have shrimp because it's not their way. Have I missed something? Look at these gorgeous babies. Are people out All here right. shrimp shaming? Now we're just gonna add in. I didn't know so many people were so concerned. Here. Can't have seafood. Chuck it in with lemon, lemon with the seeds right there. Lemon and butter. Ooh, baby. I would have just used lemon juice. That but I probably would have squeezed that on. At. Like I'm hoping they come out of this All right. butter tub I'll at some point. This. And then I'd put the citrus on. You know but what? it'd be good in it. I would juice I it. Get in! Syrup! Mixed fruits! Powdered sugar! Eggs! Red and green peppers! Bacon and cheese! Perfect! Mustard! Nobody's laughing. And, you know, they're looking to rage bait people. But when it's all said and done, it's wasteful because that's real food that can be consumed by real humans. There's a lot of people out here who are hungry, who don't have food, yet you have people on social media putting wads of butter in the middle of uncooked noodles just to try and get a reaction. So the overconsumption that I'm seeing on TikTok and on different platforms is really disturbing and disgusting. So ultimately, in my personal opinion, I feel like it signifies an issue that leads to a lot of financial strain. It also leads to environmental harm, and it's an unrealistic lifestyle expectation. People need to understand that. You know, we have to start balancing our consumption with mindful purchasing and really only purchase things that are essential, that you need. Again, there's nothing wrong with treating yourself. You have to understand the difference between self-care and treating yourself well versus overconsumption of different products. And again, this is not to knock anybody's hustle because a lot of this stuff is very aesthetically pleasing. But how many times do you have to restock your guest bathroom? Like, let's keep it real. Unless you're running a hotel, how many people are coming to stay at your home, you know what I'm saying, in a year? You might have maybe a few visitors around the holidays and things like that. But for the most part, when you're in your home, you're in your home with your immediate family. You're not having guests in your house every weekend where you have to keep doing guest bathroom restocks. While corporations that are playing influencers are responsible for some of this, but we also need to understand that it ends up being a never ending cycle because we're watching these influencers and then we're driving up the demand by running to buy said product. And a lot of the products that we run to go buy, they, they're not even worth the hype half the time. Half the time it's a bunch of lies, it's a bunch of over exaggerations. And it does help that there was a bag at the end of the rainbow for these influencers to get. So we have to be very mindful of that. Not only is it bad for the environment, but it's also bad for your overall mental health. I know a lot of people got into a lot of overconsumption of makeup back in the 2016, 2017 era when Kylie Jenner, Jeffree Star, you know, um, James Charles, a lot of these influencers were really pushing, you know, the latest lipstick and the latest eyeshadow palette. And a lot of kids went into debt. You know, a lot of college students went into debt because they were buying and collecting all of these palettes and they weren't cheap. They were starting from at least 50 bucks on up, you know, and like I said, you end up buying them and you might like two or three shades. You're not going to use all the shades. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a few bottles of your favorite perfume, but do you need literally 20 bottles of the same brand, different sizes, different colors, every fragrance? You don't. You're not going to go through all of that. 
And so people need to remember that everything has an expiration date. A lot of these folks are only pushing these products because they know that there's a check to be had. So you have to understand when you're being played with. Real self-care means being financially literate and being financially responsible and taking care of your finances first and making sure, you know what, I got a little bit of extra money. I want to splurge this month. I don't need to buy the whole Target store, but I can buy, you know, one or two things and that will last me about a year and I'm just going to enjoy that. You know, that's what it really means to have self-care. That's what it really means to have peace of mind is to be responsible financially and understand that everything that runs across your TikTok feed, you don't have to buy it, you know? So it's like a lot of things that are being pushed to us and we buy them and we find out "Mm, it's not even what it's cracked up to be and you end up feeling empty once again. It's no reason that anybody, especially people under the age of 25, need a 17-step, a 17-step skincare routine. I'm going to show you all my skincare routine. This is all of my skincare. I start off. You don't need it. You don't need it. You don't need half that stuff that she's got. Half that stuff that she's got is garbage. The other half is going to get canceled out. You don't need it. I stopped cleaning my house to tell you you don't need it. Remember, keep it simple. Less is more. You don't need all that stuff on your face. If anything, it can cause more damage when you're adding all of those products on your face at one time. And again, half these people who are promoting these huge these huge skincare routine, a lot of them are young. They don't even need it. You don't even need retinol right now. You're 25. <laughs> you're okay, you look like you're 15. Enjoy your skin while you have it. You know, maybe as you get older, you may need that stuff, but you definitely don't need it at 25. So if I'm saying 25 year olds don't need all of the skincare on their skin, imagine what I think about the tweens. You know, we have nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds who are now skincare gurus on social media. They're taking over Sephora. They're using things like Drunk Elephant and they haven't even gotten their first pimple yet. Again, social media is influencing Gen Alpha at younger ages to start really focusing on their skin, their looks, their clothing, you know, having what's hip and what's not hip. It's crazy because nowadays kids can't even be kids because they're just as obsessed with over-consumerism as the adults. We gotta talk about how y'all the kids are not all right. Because while personal hygiene and skincare, very important, by the time many of these kids are 10 years old, they're convinced they need to start anti-aging skincare routines. You got little kids asking Santa to bring anti-aging moisturizers in a sleigh. You've got Sephora's packed with kids who buy creams they can't even spell. With a New York-based dermatologist telling CNN, we've now actually started to see nine to 13 year olds in the office for cosmetic consultations on a somewhat regular basis. If you're looking at this like I was initially when the story was pitched to me and you're like, well, what, what's the deal here? Like I wanted proactive when I saw those commercials when I was young. What's the big deal? I wish I started moisturizing when I was younger. Well, it turns out that's not quite what a lot of today's tweens are doing. You've got kids as young as 10 rating Sephora in search of high-end brands like Drunk Elephant, which if you're unfamiliar with is like giving a toddler a Rolex. Or they sell creams for $70, serums that can be over 100 as well. Some anti-aging products that kids shouldn't be using. Because anti-aging products, they're meant for people who are aging. It's in the name, not prepubescent. Because while adults might benefit from things like retinol or vitamin serums, a teenager's skin, that's a different climate. They have more hormones and more collagen, so that means that they have different needs. Which is why you have tons of dermatologists now trying to get the word out, warning that these 10-step wrinkle prevention routines, they're not only unnecessary for them, but they can actually include ingredients that are bad for tweens and teens. I think the word self-care has officially been bastardized, and it's more or less about consumerism and overconsumption, when self-care should really be about personal hygiene, taking care of yourself, brushing your teeth, you know, body wash, shampoo, washing your hair, going to the gym, eating well, Those are things that really help to take care of your body. That's real self-care. You know, sitting here buying $100 bottles of this and that and drunk elephant and getting the latest Stanley Cup, that's not self-care. Because once you buy it, you're excited, you get the, you know, the endorphins, you get the dopamine hit. And then, you know, it starts to get old. Now Stanley Cups are no longer popular and not everybody's running towards the new latest cup trend. The Stanley Cups are out? It's all about the Owala bottles? Owala. My wife has never owned a Stanley, but has an Owala for every finger. And then now you feel like you have to go and get that as well. So again, this is not a video to knock people. It's not a video to knock influencers or marketing. I just want my tea sippers to be aware of the games that are being played and to understand that everything that comes across your feed, I don't care if it's on YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram, you need to ask yourself, do you really need it? If you still have some product left, use it until it's completely finished. 
and then go and buy some more. There's no need to have 30 jars of tree hut. It's just wasteful. And again, you're not going to get through all that product in less than a year. So with that being said, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on everything that's going on on social media with consumerism and overconsumption. How do you guys feel about these videos? How do you guys feel about people, you know, basically pushing stuff down our face? It's like social media has just turned into like one big advertisement at this point. It's like we're constantly being bombarded with, you know, things to buy and Amazon stores, affiliate links and everything else. It's like you can't just scroll through social media and just get normal content. Everything is tied to some type of product or advertisement. So I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on this video. Thank y'all for tuning in and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.